Marbella, Spain, has always been a famous holiday destination, especially for Britons. Over the last few years, however, it's also become infamous for seeing some of the most brutal organized gang violence Europe has ever seen. In 2022, an incident broke out at the Opium Beach Club at the Costa del Sol Resort in Marbella. At around 10 past one in the early morning, someone opened fire in the club. At least five were hospitalized with both gunshot and knife injuries, with the tragic fatality of a woman caught in the fight. The suspect of the shooting was left in critical condition himself, resulting from being stabbed a number of times. Remember, this all happened in a packed nightclub in a popular holiday destination. 2019, another suspected gang killing in Marbella. The body of a victim described as Arabic in appearance was found, as well as another man who had been badly injured after also being shot. Police saw this as another gang-related incident. 2018, a man was shot dead in an upmarket area of the Costa del Sol resort. The gunman escaped on a motorbike after shooting his victim several times. On October the 27th, 2018, a Dutch gangster was shot dead in a sushi restaurant in Bernal Madena. Three weeks before that, two bombs went off. One outside a house in a gated community, one outside a car wash close to Marbella, which was owned by the man whose home was targeted. These attacks luckily didn't lead to any injuries, but wrecked a number of cars. September 19th, a 24-year-old Brit was stabbed in Puerto Banus. He was attacked in the street without warning. Ten days before that, another Brit was subjected to a sickening degree of violence, which we can't go into in great detail on YouTube. This attack was also believed to be linked to the drug trade. There are just too many examples of fatal gang-related crimes in Marbella to cover in a single video. Just explaining them all briefly would take hours upon hours, and that's just to cover the last 10 years worth of incidents. This obscene level of violence in what is, on the surface, one of the most desirable places to live in Europe doesn't come without some level of explanation. So what's going on in Marbella, and how did it become a gangster's paradise? If you've ever been to Puerto Banus, you might have a bit of an idea. On the surface, it's beautiful. It's a luxury marina located in the southwest of Marbella on the Costa del Sol. Five million people visit the area every year, and it's just five kilometers from Marbella's town center. There's blue sea, clear skies, impressive yachts, and enviable supercars all over the place with nice bars and coffee shops dotted about in amongst the countless luxury designer boutiques, it's not surprising so many tourists are enticed by what it has to offer. But it doesn't quite feel right when you take a closer look. Sit on a bench and take a look around at the people. People are looking over their shoulder. It feels like if you accidentally trip the wrong person, or perhaps give the wrong look to the wrong person, then you might simply go missing. If you hadn't put the pieces together, gang activity is bubbling under the shiny, chrome-wrapped surface. It's thought that over 113 criminal gangs with members from 59 different countries operate from Marbella, which has of course brought all kinds of problems along the way. Out of these, 14 of the gangs are reportedly British. Most of the time, the violence is just amongst themselves. But after the tragedy of the Opium Beach Club shooting, the message that even the innocent aren't always out of harm's way was delivered and received. But why so many Brits? In short, Spain and Britain have historically had all kinds of complications originating from their less than ideal extradition treaty. This essentially meant that if you commit a crime on your home turf and need to escape the police, quickly jetting off to Spain was historically a great way to avoid being captured and sent to prison back home. This extradition treaty was why all kinds of British criminals made Marbella their new home. Many criminals used to live in Spain with impunity after a former treaty collapsed in 1978. 
This is the loophole which was taken advantage of by John Palmer, a gold dealer who was involved in a $35 million robbery in 1983, which was the biggest bullion heist in British history. This treaty has since been amended. In 1985, Britain and Spain signed a new treaty, which was intended to target British fugitives who had escaped to the Costa del Sol. At the time, Spanish officials said that the previous treaty was broken by them because tougher laws of evidence in British courts had been preventing the return of wanted Spanish criminals. Interesting side note, in an article published in 1985, they mentioned the nickname Costa del Crime, which really demonstrates just how long Marbella has had a large population of criminals. Today, under Spanish law, extradition doesn't need to worry citizens located in Spain for something that is not a crime in Spain. This means that you can't be extradited unless the offence you're up against is a crime in both countries and also carries a prison sentence of at least a year. It isn't near as advantageous from a legal standpoint as it was historically on paper. So why do so many still risk it and flock to the area? It seems like there are a number of reasons and it's hard to say specifically which factors are the most important, but nevertheless, it's worth pointing them out in a hope we can better understand what is going on. Firstly, Marbella is closer to the drug distributors than most of the rest of Europe. It's merely a boat trip away from North Africa, meaning Moroccan produce, including cannabis, can be easily accessible. It's been cultivated in Morocco for hundreds of years, and they are still some of the world's top hashish producers. In fact, as of 2016, Morocco was the world's greatest cannabis producer. Being close to the distributors reportedly has its benefits. Whilst a kilogram of cannabis can cost upwards of nine grand in Scandinavian countries, it can be bought for well under 2,000 in Andalusia. Secondly, it's a beautiful area. Many gangs used to the depressing, cold winter climate sought out an area which could provide them with bountiful business opportunities, but also a better climate. It appears that criminals are also more comfortable spending their money out in Spain as well as they're seemingly more easily able to spend large amounts of cash without being questioned as heavily. Art, gold and luxury properties are all great vessels for money laundering and if people don't ask too many questions, your job becomes a whole lot easier. There is a large existing network of criminals operating from the area. This means easy access to contacts and a number of potential colleagues or employers to get involved with. This is definitely a big reason. Although moving somewhere which is more under the radar might seem like a better idea, it's incredibly difficult to make money from organized crime if there are no organizations. Going to an area where there is already big business and a thriving black market economy makes sense from a job prospect standpoint. Finally, despite the treaty, Extradition is a relatively rare phenomenon since going into hiding is considerably easier in Spain than in many other countries. If you can buy everything you need using cash or on the black market, bank accounts can't be used to track a person's location or activities. This could be down to police not being able to keep it under control, the high cost to capture someone to bring them back, or even just authorities turning a blind eye but it certainly seems like, unless you're a kingpin, it's fairly easily to start a new life in Spain and live as a criminal without being extradited. My point to back this up would be this article, which states that at one point, nine out of 12 of the UK's most wanted criminals were alleged to be hiding out in Spain. So there you have it. Despite the common narrative that escaping to Spain if you're wanted in England provides you with a safe haven, that isn't entirely true. Other benefits are more likely to play a significant role in drawing criminals in than merely escaping the police. With luxury vehicles, jewelry and cars around every corner, it's easy to build up assets using laundered money without standing out much at all. <laughs>